Hello, I am Dr. Erica Mitchell, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about starting a vascular laboratory. The combination of practical experience, knowledge of vascular disease, and knowledge of non-invasive vascular testing makes a vascular surgeon uniquely qualified to interpret vascular lab testing. All vascular surgeons, therefore, should participate in the interpretation of non-invasive diagnostic testing. Whether they participate in the interpretation of vascular laboratory studies as a member of a reading panel of a hospital-based vascular laboratory or to establish a private outpatient office-based vascular laboratory will depend on the individual circumstances. The primary advantage of participation as a member of a reading panel in a hospital-based vascular, vascular laboratory is that many of the key business aspects of the vascular laboratory, hiring, firing of the technologist, purchasing of capital equipment, space rental, scheduling of patients, storage of reports, and dissemination of vascular laboratory reports will be taken care of through the hospital administration. If the physician chooses to establish a private office space laboratory, all of these business details apply to the office space laboratory as well. In addition, the physician must determine he or she has adequate volume to support the expense and effort involved in the outpatient laboratory. Projection of revenue streams through the vascular laboratory activities is becoming increasingly difficult as CMS is constantly tinkering with the vascular laboratory reimbursements. This makes revenue projections uncertain and the development of an accurate business model for the establishment of a new vascular laboratory difficult. Regardless, if the physician chooses to participate in a hospital-based reading panel or establish a private vascular laboratory, certain standards should be insisted upon. As much as possible, the technologist performing the vascular lab procedures should be credentialed and the vascular laboratory should be accredited by one of the accrediting agencies. Credentialing of vascular technologists and accreditation of the vascular laboratory assures professionalism and accuracy of testing. In addition, in many states, either accreditation of the vascular laboratory or credentialing of the technologist performing the tests is now required to qualify for reimbursement for vascular laboratory testing. This is a trend that is not going away and is likely going to increase in the future. To be pertinent to the practice of vascular surgery, the vascular laboratory should also offer examinations of the carotid arteries, peripheral arteries, vein grafts, acute venous thrombosis, and chronic venous insufficiency. Physiologic testing of the peripheral arteries such as segmental pressures, pulse volume recordings, and calculation of the anchor brachial index should also be offered. Carotid, peripheral arterial, and venous examinations together comprise more than 80% of the volume of a typical vascular laboratory. Additional testing can be added to these basic tests depending upon physician interest, local expertise, and local demand for other types of non-invasive vascular examinations. The physician choosing to interpret vascular laboratory studies should strongly consider taking the registered physician in vascular interpretation examination offered through the American Registry of Diagnostic Medical Sonographers. Unlike the previous registered vascular technologist credential obtained by many physicians, this examination focuses on aspects of non-invasive vascular lab testing that are important to the interpretation of vascular lab tests. It is more pertinent to how most vascular surgeons participate in the vascular lab testing than is the registered vascular technologist credential. Successful completion of the registered physician in vascular interpretation examination should assure both hospital credentialing committees and reimbursement agencies that the physician is indeed qualified to interpret non-invasive vascular laboratory examinations. Given that the vascular laboratory validates the scientific basis for vascular surgery, interpretation of non-invasive vascular laboratory testing should be a part of any vascular surgical practice. The non-invasive vascular laboratory can significantly supplement revenue for that practice. How any individual vascular surgeon elects to participate in a non-invasive vascular testing depends on individual practice circumstances. In all cases, the physician should have demonstrated competence in the interpretation of vascular laboratory studies and insist upon high-quality examinations by credentialed technologists in an accredited laboratory. These measures not only potentially increase physician revenue, but is also essential to providing optimal care of the vascular patient. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, careers, etc., visit vascoweb.org.